Okay, so today we're going to show you how to use Trimble Business Center to process baselines or post-process data from TerraSync collected data. So we'll be bringing a SSF file into Trimble Business Center. We will be downloading base station data, and then we'll be processing those baselines. So we'll go ahead and start with a new Trimble Business Center project. We're going to use a US Survey Foot. We'll hit OK. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and just double check our coordinate system settings here. We want to make sure that we are set for, in this case, New Mexico Central State Plain NAT A3 2011 with the, the latest supported geoid, which is the top one here. We're going to go ahead and double check a couple things here. One would be our baseline processing general settings. We want to make sure that for processing SSF files that we have store continuous as trajectory set to yes rather than no. We'll hit OK. And then at this point, I'm going to go ahead and drag in our SSF file. You'll see it's being captured as a continuous RTK segment, even though it's really just SBAS collected data from a Geo7x. We're not going to send the data to RTX post-processing. We could look at the tabs here and see uh, the antenna heights, right? And we could also uh, double check which receiver. So it was a Trimble Geo 7 centimeter unit. So we've got the data in here now. We could go ahead and turn on our base map if we'd like. So we can kind of get a reference of where we are. So we've got three points. Take a look, we can see some of the properties. Uh, this particular point here, 2C9, is a control point nearby. Um, so I'm actually going to import a CSV that represents the actual control. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that in. Now that I've dragged it in, we've got the import format editor, and we're going to pick point, latitude, longitude, ellipsoid height, code local. That's how this is formatted. Here we see it. We will click import. And now we see our control here. So we can actually look at it as it relates to our data. So before we actually post process, we can click on the measure distance here and do a two point distance inverse. And we've got 3.439 feet, which is pretty good when we're considering that's autonomous GPS. We may have been using SBAS. So if we want, we can save this measurement and we'll just call this pre-processed. And let's go ahead and process our data. We're gonna start by closing these windows and we're going to go to the GIS tab, choose internet download because we need to download base data. If you look here on the reference stations, I've got two listed, which are the closest two near me. If you needed to add a base station, at the top here, you see the internet download configuration. So we can click on that, and under reference stations, we can see them, and we can say new site if we'd like. And I would recommend that you select from the predefined list and download the latest updated uh, CBS list from Trimble. Of course, if you have your own base, you could enter the details manually. We will stick with the recommended option here. Now, I'm not going to pick a different base only because um, I've picked the two that I might want to use here. So I'm going to hit cancel and OK. And I'm going to click on ZAB1. This is the base that I want to use. And I'm going to click automatic. And then it's going to go ahead and match the time of my rover data to the base data. So one and a half our time slot here, we're going to click OK. And this process has downloaded it here. And then we want to import it into the TBC project. Now, I do not want to send it to RTX, so I'm not going to check that. But I wanted to point out the, the ID, the duration, the two hour duration matching my one and a half hour session. And then on the bottom tab, we can see information on the antenna of the base if we wanted to and the receiver as well. we'll click OK. So now that I've got the base data in here, if we look on the left, we actually have under imported files, now we have the CSV, right, where I brought in the control. We have the SSF re representing the rover data from the Geo7x centimeter unit. And then now we have uh, the, the ZAB1 data sheet and the NAV and RINEX files for that time frame. So the next step would be to process, right, here's the base and my rover data is over here. The next step is to process baselines underneath the GIS tab here. 
And that will automatically process those based on the base data that's in the project. If I wanted to, I could have brought in multiple base stations data and process against all of them. For this, you know, I'm not going to do that. That's a little bit more involved. And maybe if you're really fighting for centimeters, then you might want to do that. And we're going to go ahead and save now. And we can actually zoom in and you'll notice that on the left under my points in the Project Explorer, points one, two, and three were the ones I collected. 2C9 was the control that I brought in and ZAB1 represents the base. But if we expand the ones that I collected with the rover, you'll see that we have a post-process coordinate and the original coordinate. If I wanna look at properties, right, we can look at my properties window, I'll zoom in here, and we can see the coordinate before processing and the coordinate after processing. So the difference on the vertical on this particular point was, uh, about two foot difference, so pretty substantial. I'm gonna focus on point two because that's the point that, um, that we have here at the control point. Now our distance is 0.321 feet. That measurement updated, right? Because it knew I snapped it to those two vert vertices. Um, this isn't bad considering this unit was in my hand over a control point, right? I'm not on a rod with an external antenna. So horizontally to be within three tenths, I'm pretty happy with. Let's take a look at the vertical. We could actually label the vertical here. So under point two, I'm gonna go ahead and say to show elevation. So we see 54, 54, 439. And I'll do the same thing on point two. Let's go ahead and show the elevation. So we've got 54, 54.550. So not bad to be a little over a tenth when I've got this thing in my hands. But this is how you would process data from an SSF file from TerraSync collected data inside of Trimble Business Center. Okay, now that we've processed our data in Trimble Business Center, we're gonna go ahead and export our data to a format of our choice. The first step would be to select our points in the Project Explorer, which we've done here. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, zoom extent so we can see everything here. And I'm gonna go to the Home tab here and click Export. Now, if you haven't built an export format, uh, you may need to do that. I'm going to pick GIS and I'm going to do a shapefile exporter. Of course, we could go to GeoDatabase as well. I'm going to go ahead and export to shapefile the three selected. We'll click the ellipses to specify the name and where it's going to go. I'm just going to put it here and we're going to call this TBC SSF Processed Test. And I'm going to check some of the settings here. So I do want my units to be US Survey Foot, I want grid coordinates. And I want to make sure I inc include all of these pieces of information. Then we'll go ahead and click export. And now we're finished and can bring this into GIS or CAD or wherever we would like to go. Thanks again for joining us for another Altera Central Technical video.